Labor Day is tomorrow. How many of you know that um, Labor Day was first recognized by a state in 1887, right across the river in Oregon? <laughs> this one rap, like, yes! <laughs> You might not know that Labor Day also happens to be the unofficial starting week of NFL. All right, we're getting, we're warming up. And you might also not know that on Labor Day is the very first day that a Waffle House served a waffle anywhere ever. All right, we're getting there, okay. And some of you are like, I don't know what a Waffle House is. I get it, you know. It's, it, go south, they're everywhere. I, it is, it's atrocious. I've literally been in cities where I'm standing in the parking lot of a Waffle House and I can see the next Waffle House. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's how they feel about things. They're like, we're going to start on Labor Day. Amen. Yep. So we've been in this series for a couple of weeks now. This is a really short series, and we're going to end it today. We're going to start something brand new called Restored next week, and we've got baptisms next week, and it's going to be a party around here. It's going to be a great time. But today we're going to wrap up these stories of the kingdom, and we're going to talk about the whole idea about this is that the kingdom of heaven is closer than you think. The kingdom of heaven is always closer than we think. That was the big idea behind this. And, and it's funny because, you know, we're celebrating this holiday, uh, you know, from working tomorrow, supposedly. Uh, I'm not going to ask how many of you are working tomorrow, but uh, I know it, it kind of defeats the purpose. But uh, we get this idea that the kingdom of heaven is always closer than we think from, from Jesus when he started preaching. When he started his ministry and he started preaching, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, it says, From that time on to the beginning of his ministry, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. That was his big message. That was the big idea. That, hey, you know what, guys? The kingdom of heaven is always a lot closer than you think. Now, in Jesus' case, it was very literal what he meant. Why? Because he's the king. And you're never closer to the kingdom than when you are close to the king. But today I want us to look at one more story about the kingdom of heaven that, that comes from Jesus and has a little bit to do with labor. Has a little bit to do with the hard work that we put in. And it, in Matthew chapter 20, if you want to turn there with me today, and if you're like, well, I have my Bible or I don't have my Bible, you can pull your Bible up on your phone. You know, if you get distracted by your phone, just put it in airplane mode. It'll be okay. Bible will still pull up, and you won't get distracted by all those notifications. Isn't that beautiful? You're like, I didn't think you could do that. You can. <laughs> From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent, from the uh, kingdom of heaven is near. And in chapter 20, starting in verse 1, he says this, for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. Doesn't that sound like the most boring thing ever? The kingdom of heaven is like a guy who went out to find workers? Okay. Jesus, you're going to have to elaborate on this. But, but I want to start with this because sometimes it's the mundane that we miss, the glory. We get so in the little circle of the cycle of work and the things that we do because I, work is what we do more than almost anything other than maybe sleep. And some of us pretend like we don't need sleep because we've got so much work to do. Mm. That's a different sermon. I'm not, even, I'm not even getting into that today. We're not even talking about the Sabbath today and rest. We're talking about work today. But I want you to notice something about the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is present in the small daily things that we take for granted. Amen. It's always closer than you think. What if you started to look at your job a little bit differently? What if you started looking at your job in the way that everything that you do, you're doing for the kingdom of heaven? 
And you're like, but pastor, you don't know my boss. <laughs> I know, but just for a minute, pretend you don't work for them. Now, don't stop working for them because you won't get paid by them. <laughs> it's not what I'm advising. I'm saying that when you go to work, when you clock in, why don't you make that about the kingdom of heaven? Why don't you realize that what we do, the labor that, that comes from our hands, our minds, our, all of this is tied into the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because we're citizens of that kingdom. So the work that we do is work for the kingdom. It doesn't feel like that when you're working your day job. And you're like, but pastor, you work for the church. Of course you work for the kingdom of heaven. Look, look. Walk with me for a week. And I will promise you, you'll realize this is a job, <laughs> okay? There's a lot to do. A lot of stuff I don't want to do. I like preaching. That is the smallest percentage of what I get to do as a pastor. But you can't take it for granted. This is what happens. Usually, when we don't have a job, we're praying for a job. God, I need that job. Or we hate our job. We're praying for a better job. <laughs> Don't quit first. Pray first. Get a better job and then quit. Hear the word. Yep. Okay, I'm going to repeat that. <laughs> if you hate your job, don't quit your job. Pray first. Find a better job, then quit. Are we all on the same page? Amen. All right. We're good today. This is probably why I don't usually preach on Labor Day weekend. But when we get that new job, that thing that we wanted, that thing that we had prayed for, that thing that we had went through the interview process, which is stressful, and we've gone through all these hoops, we've taken the test, we've done the whatever, and, and you get to that first day in the job, you're like, Jesus, thank you for this job. It's clearly a part of the kingdom of heaven. But are you that grateful for the same job five years later? <laughs> 10 years later? 30 years later. You know, they used to give you like gold watches after you'd been a place for 25 years. What happened to that? There used to be value in longevity. But maybe the value... Maybe the value in longevity went out with the gratitude for longevity. Pastor, I don't like that. That puts it back on me. Yeah. Do you work just as hard 30 years in as you did on day one? Or do we just take things for granted? Or do we just assume, okay, I'm in this role and I'm just going to always be in this role. I, I can tell you what, things can flip overnight in your life. And sometimes you lose something and you realize how grateful you should have been for it. Amen. Not that you were grateful that you should have been. We've all been there, haven't we? It's like, I didn't realize how much I should have appreciated that. You don't appreciate the electricity until you flip the switch and it doesn't come on. Because <laughs> you take it for granted. You don't notice it. It's the thing that's most regular in your life. But I'm telling you, that's where the kingdom of heaven always is. I don't care how long you've been at your labor. The kingdom of heaven is present in your labor if you are grateful for your opportunity and you're working for the kingdom. The gratitude might come back for you if you're like, Pastor, I just don't understand what you're talking about today. That's crazy. The gratitude might come back for you if every morning before you go off and, and take toward your job and you say, God, help me be useful in the kingdom today through my job and see what happens. You might learn something that you didn't know before. You might interact with people on a different basis because most jobs involve people, coworkers or public. And if you work at a public-facing job, you have so many kingdom opportunities every day that you might just be missing. Then he says this, verse 2, He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day, 
and sent them into his vineyard. This is early in the morning. He said, I'm going to pay you one denarius for the day. It's a day's wage. You guys go and work. And about nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. So this is the second trip. So it's nine in the morning, and these are guys that have not found work yet. And verse four, he told them, you also go and work in my vineyard, and I'll pay you whatever is right. Catch that. The first guys, he says, here's the exact wage I'm going to pay you. The second group of guys, he goes, I'll pay you whatever's right. So they went, verse five. And he went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. You keep a track, four times he's gone out now to look for people to work. And, and he said, hey, you know, you, you guys go work in my field. And then verse six, about five in the afternoon, there's not much work day left. <laughs> about five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. How about that? First of all, kudos for them for still standing there. By five o'clock, this group could have given up and gone home and gone, I'm not getting work today. It's five o'clock and there's still people standing around going, I'm willing. <laughs> Nobody else coming around at five, but I'm willing. And he asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? That's not a slight. That's a, you guys look eager to work. What are you doing here? Verse 7, because no one has hired us, they answered. That's kind of a die answer, isn't it? It's like, well, we're here because no one else hired us. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. And from this passage, I want to I give you three really big things, okay? Three really big things to start with. The first is this, that the kingdom of heaven values hard work. The job we have to do is to reach the harvest in our area. And I can promise you this, the work is hard and the hours are long. There's work to be done. But I can also promise you this, the kingdom of heaven values hard work. Why? Because the guy that's hiring them says, hey, guess what? I'm, I'm going to pay you what's right. I'm, gonna, I'm going to value what you do. Because there's gratitude and then there's value. Amen. Right? There's a pat on the back and then there is a reward. The kingdom of heaven rewards the work that we do. And then I want you to see this. There are many opportunities to work in the kingdom of heaven. Isn't that great? Because the guy comes out Early in the morning before anybody else is up, he comes back out at 9, he comes back out at 12, he comes back out at 3, he even goes one last time at 5 in the afternoon. There are so many opportunities to work in the kingdom of heaven. That's why we do things the way that we do things. Three times a year, we have sign-ups for things. Spring, summer, fall. Why? Because those are the seasons of your life. So those are the seasons of our church. And then we also have connect class each one of those times. During connect class, it's so cool. You guys get to go through, and many of you have, I'm looking out. You guys get to go through spiritual and, uh, and, and personality tests. So you know where you're strong. And you know where God is calling you. And, and there are these really awesome conversations that we get to have in that. And, and really, it's an opportunity to serve. Because we ask you, hey, what do you want to do? What do you want to do in the kingdom of heaven? What do you want to do in Valley View Church? And if you, you, you don't come on one of those on-ramps, guess what? In your worship guide, every single Sunday is the blue card. Yes. Come on Isn't this thing great? It's so simple. You put your name on it so we know who at least filled it out. That's, I mean, that's bare minimum. I'm just asking. Because sometimes you, you, put, you put something on the back here, but I have no idea who did it. <laughs> I didn't help. But you can fill this out on the back. Yeah, there's, there's next steps. I decided to follow Jesus, water baptism, child dedication. There's prayer that we can pray with you, with our prayer team. And, and then there's sign me up to serve. Any Sunday. Look, 
as your pastor, I give you permission from here on. If there's any Sunday that you go, I think I want to join the media team. I think I want to join the worship team. I think I want to work with kids. God bless you. You can fill this card out. Put your name on it. And drop it in the kiosk. Why? Because the kingdom is growing. And if we miss giving you the opportunity to be part of it, we're not doing what we're supposed to do. So we want to give as many opportunities. Early in the morning, 9 in the morning, 12 in the afternoon, 3, 5. Look, you slide in at the end. It's fine. You're still welcome. And then there's this. And don't miss this because this is almost understated in this passage. There is room for everyone to work in the kingdom of heaven. There's room for everyone. Because there's always something more to do. Because the harvest keeps growing. There's always more people being born. There's always more people that that need to know about Jesus. And there's always more ways that we can reach them if we're creative. And if we're dedicated to kingdom labor. And if we don't mind a little hard work, somebody. So there's room for everyone. And this is what I love. Because he comes up and he asks the guys at 5 o'clock, what are you doing here? Like, what are you guys still doing here? And their answer is brilliant. Nobody else will hire us. Don't miss this. I don't care what anyone has ever told you about your capabilities. There is room for you to work in the kingdom. I don't care who has written you off. I don't care who has told you you're not hireable. I don't care who has told you you're not worth anything or you can't do that. There is room for everyone that wants to work in the kingdom. That's a beautiful picture. It's the picture of God going out there and going, no one else will take you. I'll take you. So if you ever felt like, well, nobody wants me, that's not true. I know that your heavenly father has not just called you. He's called us to call you. But here's where things get a little interesting. Because when evening came, came time to pay the workers. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. Now, I want you to get this. The last ones hired have worked like an hour. Short work day. (laughs) Don't in, don't, don't. Don't aspire to be those people. (laughs) They still got to work and they still got paid. Don't aspire to slide in at the end, okay? But he says, call and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. And the workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. Now remember, he did not promise the people that, that worked... At five, all of them from nine o'clock on, he said, I'll pay you what's right. It was only the people early in the morning that he promised this exact compensation. But he's paying the guys that worked one hour a denarius. Oh, it gets more interesting. (laughs) So when those who came were hired first, they expected... Look at somebody, tap them on the shoulder and say, they expected something. They expected to receive more. But each one of them was also received a denarius. How does it make you feel? How did it make them feel? See, they saw the guys that worked for an hour, and they're like, oh, they're getting paid. 
like what he promised us early in the morning. We've been working like 10 times the amount of time they worked. We're about to bankroll this. <laughs> We've been working all day. We've been in the kingdom longer. than anyone else. I don't, even, I don't even have to spell it out for you, do it. <laughs> We've been doing this so much longer. And then they got paid what? Exactly what they were promised. What was wrong? The pay or their expectations? When they received it, they begin to grumble against the landowner. Ooh. So let's talk about what happens too often in churches when it comes to kingdom labor. There's this bell curve. There's this eventuality that I've seen so many times, and some people, some people call it burnout, some people call it hurt, some people call it disillusionment, some people call it deconstruction. But I want to be really, really clear with kingdom labor this morning. There is a difference between church hurt and unrealistic expectations. Right. Let me spell it out for you. Pastor, are you saying there's no church hurt? Nope. I wish there was no church hurt, but I have been firsthand privy to some vicious conversations for some people that were not acting godly like they should have in the church. Should there be forgiveness and some grace? Yeah, but there should also be some accountability. Okay? And if you were hurt in any church... Let me just go ahead and stand in the role of authority and say I'm sorry. I'm not going to move past this quickly. Because what you need is you need healing, you need forgiveness. I'm sorry. I hope I didn't do it to you. Whoever it was that did it to you, I'm sorry for them the best I can do. But let's not call every unrealistic expectation that we have in the church, church hurt. Because the church is still made of people last time I checked. People going to people. Hear the word. Man. But this is what I mean by unrealistic expectations. It is the attitude in our culture that has began to treat the kingdom of heaven as not something that is near and to be treasured, but as something that we consume. And as a consumerist mindset, we have expectations of what we think the church should be and do for us. And if those expectations are never met, then we are hurt. There's a difference between consumers and contributors. Now, did those guys work hard all day long in the kingdom? They did. Did they get paid exactly what they were promised? Yep. Why are they grumbling? Why are they complaining? Because... Early that morning, they didn't have a job. God gave them something, rewarded them for it, and then they complained about it. Why? Not because of them being treated unjustly, but because they compared their situation to someone else. But they were rewarded. See, that's one of the things that's really important. I don't want you to miss this. At the very beginning, he promised them a promise, wage. He said, I will value your work today. They did the work, and guess what? They got the reward. There is kingdom reward for kingdom labor. And you have to understand this. God pays out differently. 
When he rewards you for all of that hard work, I can promise you the value is not a day's wage. The value is eternal and you cannot put a price on that. There is kingdom reward for kingdom labor. What he has called us to do is what he rewards us for. And if you're going, well, you know, where do I find that labor? What, where do, your labor, where you fit in the kingdom is always going to be at the intersection of God's calling and God's timing. Sometimes as he's called you to do, and you've realized what that calling is, but for whatever reason, you're not ready. It's not that he's not ready, so you're not ready. But there's this beautiful intersection that happens, and I can't tell you how many times I've seen it, where people know they're calling, that's kind of, it's, it's moving around in their life, and they're figuring that thing out, and then the timing begins to line up. The door opens, and it's like, boom! All of a sudden, oh, I see where I'm supposed to fit in the kingdom. And it's great. That's part of the reward. I know that it doesn't sound that like labor is part of the reward. I, I'm, trust me, until you experience it, it's hard to understand. But he explains to them exactly what's going on. He says, these who were hired last worked only one hour. This is their complaint. Well, Sure. And you've made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. Jesus, I've been following you so much longer than everybody else. But he answered one of them. They're all grumbling, but he points one out and goes, I'm going to talk to you. Oh, don't be that one. Oh. But he answered one of them. I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? D- didn't you? Isn't that what you agreed to? Like, d- didn't you sign up this morning for eternal life? Hear the word. I mean, it, really, it's, it's like serving Jesus your entire life and then being upset because the thief on the cross got in. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's right, yeah. Well, just because he was late to the party means he doesn't get invited? No, we don't think like that, do we? Don't we? Not, not abruptly, but usually in subtle ways. Well, I mean, I deserve because I've been, I mean, I've been serving Jesus for a long time, so I I deserve these things. Isn't that dangerous thinking? There is not one of us that sits in this place that deserves anything that God has given us. That's why it's called grace. It's undeserved favor. And if you think you have earned any part of your salvation, go back to the beginning of it. And remember who you were before Jesus. See, our unrealistic church expectations come from comparing our kingdom experience to someone else's. They do not come from our relationship with Jesus. Never do they come with our relationship from Jesus. Never have I had someone go, Pastor, I'm just so hurt by Jesus. What did he do to you? It's always the same thing, isn't it? Well, someone in the church hurt me. Take it to Jesus. always has to do with our experience 
not our experience with our Father or in heaven. It has to do with our experience with other people. We begin to compare what we think we're doing in the kingdom, what other people are doing in the kingdom. But let me tell you something. First of all, they don't know what you've been through, but you do not know what they've been through to be in the kingdom where they are. You see somebody that God is using in some spectacular ways in the kingdom, celebrate that. But you also don't know what grief that they have gone through to get to that place. Because I can tell you, and every leader in this church can tell you, when you choose to say, you know what, I want to go the extra step. I want to go the next mile. I want to engage in leadership in the church. All hell breaks loose against you. We got some coordinators and directors in here that can confirm what's going on. Why? Because if he can destroy leaders, he can always destroy the rest. So you see things on the outside, but you really have no idea what's going on. And you know what? Every single one of us has to just be okay with that. You just have to get to a place in your faith where you're okay not knowing what someone else's kingdom experience is. Why? Because that's between them and their Savior. If God wanted it to be your business, he would have made you their Savior. Okay, Labor Day is going well. Some of y'all are, I'm glad I'm off tomorrow now. (laughs) Here's what we go to. He asked them, hey, did I pay you what I promised you? That's basically what he asked. He said, when they started complaining, he, he he went back, he said, did I pay you what I promised you? And this is what I want you to remember. Always remember what you signed up for in the kingdom of heaven. Always go back to the beginning. Always go back to, okay, Jesus, why did I sign up for this in the first place? Jesus, what was it about this? Oh, yeah, that's right. I was a sinner. I was a wretched person. I was a horrible person. I couldn't even keep promises to myself. And you saved me from all of that. I remember what I signed up for now. You changed all of that in my life. Okay. Because... It's this, if you begin at any point to think God is unfair in what he has promised you in the kingdom, then what will happen next is you will go back to what you were before the kingdoms. I don't want to go back there. (laughs) And so he says in verse 14, look, take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last, the same as I gave you. And this is, I love this. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? (laughs) Says God. God says, don't I have the right to do with salvation what I want to do with salvation? It is, in fact, coming from me. So the real question is not whether or not God's being unfair. The real question is, are you envious? Because God is generous. Mm. He says, so the last will be first and the first will be last. And God likes to flip things backwards in our lives. Not just because, but usually it's because we put the things in the priority positions that don't belong in the priority positions, and he wants us to reverse the way that we think about things. So let me give you this, these last four or five things really quick. The joy of the kingdom labor is the generosity of the king, and let me give you in four ways the king is generous. The first is this, that he invites us to come near. Why is the kingdom of heaven near? Because the king invites you into his presence and he doesn't have to do that. He wants you near to him. It is his generosity that he goes out and he finds you where you didn't have a position in the kingdom and he invites you to come work in his vineyard. That is his generosity. 
The second is this. He equips us to prosper. He doesn't just send us into the fields. He equips us. He surrounds us with other laborers. He gives us the tools that we need. We have the Holy Spirit going with us in all of these things. And he is wanting for us to succeed. The third is this. He rewards us for our labor. He rewards us for our labor. You know what? He is the creator of you and me and the universe and all things. If God wanted to make a demand of us, he's perfectly reasonably the one that can make a demand of his creation. Yet, he invites He equips, and then when we do what we're designed to do, he then rewards us. That is generous. He doesn't have to do any of those things. He can make us run around like puppets on a string, but that is not what he desires because of his love and generosity. And the last is this. He promotes us in our maturity. The older I get, the, 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 the more I see things differently. I look at that verse, you know, the first will be last and the last will be first. And I start to understanding it in a little bit different way. Because I remember when I was younger, I always wanted, I was so eager. Like, man, I want to chase the front. I, I, want, to, I want to move forward. I want to be at the front of the line. I want to do this thing. I, I want to lead the charge. Put me in, coach. Like, boom, we got this. And you know, as I get older, I find myself in a position where I get equally as excited, maybe even more excited, when younger leaders Newer leaders go past me to the front of the line. And I'm happy taking a back seat because in our maturity, you might move to a different place in the line, but you're excited for what now is first. Those that are younger and more eager and and haven't been to the places I've been yet, I can help them and I can coach them. But but boy, there's, there's a joy in moving them forward to where God's called them to be for their timing. And I see that different now. God, what was first becomes last. What was last, the, the people that nobody was thinking about, they're they're now leading the charge. Because of the generosity of my king, I'm just happy to be called to be part of the process. So would you bow your heads today, every head bowed, every eye closed in this place. Maybe we've been talking today about working in the kingdom. Maybe you felt like that, you know what, that that nobody, there's not a place for you. I want God to to just put in your heart today the place that he wants for you in the kingdom. That's what I want for you. So you can find life and fulfillment in, in where he has for you. He's calling out to you today. The question is, where is he calling you to? Because I think the timing's right. So that's you today. Pastor, I just, I just want to find where my place in the kingdom is. Would you just lift your hand real quick? Oh, look at these hands today. Father God, you see the heart of those that are in here today, God, and surely some that are watching online right now. God, help every single one of them that raise their hand. God, every single one of us that seeks to find our place in the kingdom, God, answer that today. Or begin the process of answering that. Open up these avenues and these opportunities. 
Let us have joy in serving. Don't let us get to the place that we've been doing this so long, we take it for granted, God. Let us, let us always continually be grateful for the opportunity and not fall into grumbling. God, thank you that you're a generous God, that you are generous in your kingdom. And let us always know that you're near to us. Even when we don't see it, even when we don't feel it, God, let it be in us so that we know it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I think we talked about it enough today, but in your worship, guys, that little blue card. If you know what, today you decided to follow Jesus today, I would love for you to fill that out, put that in. If you want to be baptized next week, there's room for you. There's room for you. Sign up. Go ahead and be baptized. There's a digital connect card if you're joining us online. But I'm ready to serve and see what God has for us in this next season. Amen? Would you stand with me today? Would you lift your hands as we are about to go back into worship? Let me pray a prayer or blessing over you. Father God, I pray blessings over your people today. God, I pray that you bless. They're rising up, they're lying down, they're coming in, they're going out. God, I pray that you bless them with favor as the light of your face shines upon them. God, I pray that you bless them with health and strength for their journey ahead. And God, I pray that you bless them financially as they continue to be generous to others. And God, I pray that you bless them with the greatest of all blessings, the honor, the privilege, and the opportunity of introducing someone to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their life. This week I pray in Jesus' name, amen.